Rand Paul is in New Hampshire, where he started the day by taking on none other than Savannah Guthrie on the Today Show. Not a good move. You seem to have changed over the years. You once said Iran was not a threat. Now you say it is. You once proposed ending foreign aid to Israel. You now support it, at least for the time being. And you once offered to drastically yeah, well, cut. We go, wait, wait, wait. Before we go, once before drastically we, and we wanted to, to cut defense spending, and now litany, you want to increase it 16%. Before, yeah, so I just wonder if you've mellowed out. Litany of, yeah, why don't you let me explain instead sure. of talking over me, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the one and only Mary Madeline. Republican political consultant, and uh, you know her whole history with one president after the other. Mary, welcome. Stephen, I cannot hear that enough, and it proves what we've known for the past several cycles. What a parallel universe in which we live and vote. So all the mainstream media, it's such a cliche to even say that, thought this was so rude, and all the mainstream American people thought it was such a fabulous thing. And you know what it, it shows? It's not just Rand, who was masterful. Walker did the same thing. Rubio's going to get in next week. He'll do it, and Cruz will do it, and they all have the chutzpah and the brains to do it, which is to, they totally got this media gotcha stuff, and they're not going to play the game. It was beautiful. It was totally beautiful. Well, yeah, I, I got to tell you, it, it really was. It, it harkened me back to um, at one of the debates where uh, Newt Gingrich went after, I think it was uh, Maria Bartiromo when she asked a question. And, and it, it speaks to what Mitt Romney did not do to Candy Crowley. Correct. Well, Mitt Romney's, you know, there's, you can be kind and polite to a fault. And the, what Republicans in general have a problem with is accepting the premise, letting the opposition set the agenda, and then they're forever playing defense. I, I learned this through decades of debating with my husband and other liberals. <laughs> you're constantly make, you're constantly answering a charge that isn't your belief. So you're defending something that you don't even believe in right. as opposed to, because that's how they do. They set up. They can't debate on the merits, so they distort your position, and then you're trying to clean up. Well, these guys have learned that lesson painfully. This is a new generation of candidates. They're not going to play. And it's and I think, ironically, who's going to play the old game, have to play the old game, this cycle is going to be Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yeah, all right, well, let's talk about Hillary Rodham Clinton. The big announcement is supposedly coming on Sunday via Twitter. Um, what is she up to here with this, the, the Twitter announcement on a Sunday? Well, Again, ironically, polls seem to indicate that to see her is not to like her. The more she's out there, the, the more she wilts. There was a poll in PX yesterday, I believe, or this week sometime, showing that her support, even with her not being out there, is dwindling, wilting, as they call it. And the support for Rand and Cruz and others who are in the race uh, announced is growing. So I think this strategy is she's going to have to run a bit of a – uh, Rose Garden strategy to control her ac uh, control access to her because she's not a good candidate. She may be good at other things. Uh, I'm not here to defend her, but I cannot see anything in her record that indicates she has a prowess as a candidate. So, so she's kind of hiding uh, based on the polling and figuring this is the uh, the best way to do it. Well, I also think she doesn't. She learned one lesson from the last go around, which is you got to have a good campaign uh, structure, which it takes a long time to get into place. She does have good, better people this time than she did last time, but she's the presumed nominee, the inevitable nominee, and nobody's really running against her credibly yet, so she can't come out of the box and, and withstand the scrutiny she's going to get as the single candidate on that side when She's not up and ready to do it. Right. So this is what we call a soft opening. Yeah. Well, Mary, we'll see what happens. We'll have you back. Uh, enjoy the festivities down in NOLA, and appreciate you coming yes, out as yes, always. Yes, baby, yes, yes. Come on down. <laughs> I would love to. Uh, Mary Madeline, love talking to you. Have a great one. That's it. All right, bye-bye. All right, folks, uh, up next, uh, Lisa Booth will join us. But first, what do you think of President Obama's call for gun and ammunition controls? Uh, let me guess. Uh, well, I think I know what most of you think, but you can vote in our Newsmax poll at Newsmax.com guns. That's Newsmax.com guns. 
We, as always, want to hear from you. We're coming back on the Steve Malsberg Show.